hey welcome back in this video you are going to learn how you can read data from firestore and display it in your view application here to be honest when i was learning firebase and reading data it was one of the difficult part of reading data properly and displaying here because when, it's, when you read data from firestore it is going to give you a lot of extra information that you might not need and your data is completely lost in that so let's dive deep and see what i mean by that so I will come to my application here. Here is the form we have for adding the data to Firestore. And under that, I will just write a little h, let's say h3. And we say this is going to be product list. Uh, of course, in real life, you will have a like table to display all your information. So we will have a table. It has a t head. For table heading and tr table row and the t h should be let's say we are going to display the name of the product as well as the price for now and this has of course a body oops it should be t body sorry and tr and is going to be td for table data and this is going to display our information so for now we just leave it here and i will save this file here for now and let's see how you can read the data so before we read data from firestore let's go to the documentation if you come to the firestore cloud firestore and the right hand in the left hand side of the menu going to the read data here is the read data once and all you have to do is scroll down it will give you some example basically you can use your db connection with the collection function it is going to check all the collection or the document you have in the collection here and th these examples do not help you like whenever you want to get data you want to loop through them and display them this is what we want so if you scroll down at the bottom here is what we want they say get all documents in a collection so this code is what we want so i will copy this one make sure you are in the web tab not in swift or objective c or other tabs so what we are we can do is i will say whenever my component was created i want to get data from firestore and store it in an object so before we do that we must have an object here so that's why we must have a products with plural object it this is an empty object for now this is empty and whenever our component was created which we can uh, write the created function here i just want to run this function the function it is going to take data and it is going to use our db connection which we import at the top here and it is going to call the collection function and the parameter is going to be the collection name so what is the collection name it is going to be products and it is going to get those information and it will store that in the query snapshot now those information all of the the documents you have will be in the query snapshot now this is going to loop that and it will display that in console.log all the documents you have so for now if i save it let's see if it work coming to our application i will just bring the console.log scrolling down yeah we have the four object we have in our database here here is the all the documents we have all the products and this is what they display here so let's see if we can add more and it works just fine let's see we are going to sell a pencil and this is going to be one dollar so you save data once you click on this one yeah it saved data and it will return the document here but it didn't put the next time here but when we say real-time database it should update everything in real life this is going to update everything uh, let's see how we can display that here so what we can do is instead of consoling it and logging to the console i want to store it in our object here how you do that one you might think yeah that is easy we can use this dot products which refer to the product we have at the top and it is going to be equal to doc dot data right if i save it for now of course it is, does not work because you do not have access to this inside your function because we are using the old way we are not using the arrow function to have access to the this 
and for this one also of course they are using in the documentation of Firestore they are using the old ES6 or the old JavaScript not ES6 that's why uh, you have to know how you can change this stuff so if I save it for now and everything compiles fine we have the product property which is undefined it is fine it is not fine so we do not have access to this one how how come like we don't have access to the product here if I s refresh the page again and now if you want to check if your product have those information just go to view tab here and now you are in the view tab just wait for this one a little if it does not work like just refresh it because sometimes it did, does not come so you come to the product here and this is the product you have here this is an object and it will store only one object here how about the others when you loop through this one it is going to display the last one or the one you have created first it is going to store that every time it loop it is going to store this information here but it is going to store only one of them so this is not what we want we want to store all of them so how you do that one there is a joystick function called push right if you have heard of the push push is not going to work on the objects so you must have the array like if you say push and it is going to say doc dot data this is going to take those data and uh, store that in an, an array so the product is not an array so I'll come at the top instead of writing that bracket I will write that as an array so now this is an array and it will store every document as an object to this array if I save it for now this come to our application it should refresh by default yeah you come on the doc document on the product here product component this time if you open the products array here you have all your objects works just fine like this you have the five uh, documents you have now you can display that in the list here the reason I said they are going to give you a lot of extra information so let me show you what does that mean I know the video will get longer but you will get something out of it so you might say you are going to write it inside this one this is how I did but I was thinking the query snapshot must have all the documents what if I store the query snapshot directly to my product here what will happen so let's do that one instead of writing it inside the loop I will say this dot product is equal to query snapshot so let's see if I save it this time it should refresh everything and now I will again go to the product component this time if I open the product here this contain an object and this object is containing a lot of objects inside another object and your data is completely lost here like you don't know where is your data that's why you have to put that inside the loop and this is how it works like of course this is going to contain your information but you cannot access the, uh, those information unless you loop through them and use the data function to get those information so I will comment this out make sure you play around with this and see if you have a better way of doing this one this is the only way and for me to work just fine so I will save it for now and this is going to contain all our documents so now you can loop through and display it here you can say v4 product in products now you have the product here and you can display it in the TD here so of course this is going to repeat the row the first one is product dot name and the second one is going to product dot price I hope you are familiar with the for loop which we have discussed in the previous videos so this time if I come here yeah this is going to display all our uh, product here in the list when we say real-time database it means like this if I add another product let's say we are going to sell a book to maybe you have a book here don't we no we don't have a book so this is the book and this is going to cost ten dollars so I will save it without refreshing the page it it should display those information down there but it is not showing why 
because it is going to populate those information again I will come here all the way down we don't have anything we don't have any error also what happened like we just add another in uh, data if I come to my database it did add the pencil how about the book no the book is not here we have missed something this is one of the common mistakes that might happen in your version 2. We don't have the data after we create a new one. The reason is, if I come here, we call the reset uh, function here. In the previous video, I said we just took the code from a stack workflow, and what this code is going to do, this code is going to reset the data of, of our component. So the problem is here. You can comment this code, and let's come and try again. So let's see, yeah, it reload the page and we have all our data here. This time if I add another data, let's say we just say a book 2 and this is going to be $11. You save the data. It did save that in the database here, but it didn't reload the data or the details we have here. So to save that and the database and update it in real time here, what you can do is instead of putting the all your code for reading and the created at because this will run only once when you, it is created you can put this in a function later you can use this one now what the what is the function I will say read data the reason I do this one this is because of the mistake every developer might do in the beginning so that's why I, I go through this one with you so that you should not do this one in the first place and okay now you have your function here what you can do is you can call the function on created at you can say this dot read data and the same way when you create a save data into database you reset it instead of reset i can just say read data now we do not reset of course i will work on the reset and the, the next video for now let's see if it works just fine i will come here we have all our data here uh, let's do our try like we are going to sell uh, let's see what we are going to sell let's say we are going to sell music and it's going to be ten dollar and we save it it saves it on the database and it should display it here too where's our music something new yeah music 10 it will display it here this is how you do with real-time database there are some other options uh, too, like I will show in the future videos. Like you can use the uh, view file store that will make a lot easy and real time database. For now, we didn't use anything, we just wrote our own code. That's why it is going to work like this. So I hope it has been informative. If you have any question, feel free to ask below the video. Thank you for watching.